land use hearings at 10 10 a.m. County Manager, could you give us the first case to be heard? Yes, we have a, we have our first item, um, and actually our only case today, uh, PLT 2015-3. It's Crossroads uh, Commerce Park. Michael Weaver with our planning department is going to uh, talk through the case. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning. This is case number PLT 2015-3. Um, before I begin, this will include uh, an overview of the request before you this morning as well as um, a memo that was attached to the staff report, which provides a brief overview and historical background information about this exciting project. So I'll kind of go over that first and then go into the details of the request. So the applicant is requesting a waiver from Section 527, required improvements prior to the issuance of building permits, and to tie these requirements to the issuance of certificates of occupancy, rather than to building permits for the Crossroads Commerce Park at Globeville subdivision. Brief history of the site, refining operations began back in 1886. During uh, most of the 20th century, we saw ongoing lead and arsenic smelting and cadmium production on the site. In the 1980s, CDPAG sued ASARCO for environmental damages. Both parties agreed to conduct, to conduct joint studies to, de to determine the extent of the contamination on the site. In 2006, the Globe plant closed. The following year, Globeville One LLC negotiated a purchase agreement with ASARCO and the bankruptcy court to accept obligations and liabilities associated with the property <clears throat> and to redevelop the property. In 2009, the ASARCO Multi-State Custodial Trust was approved and received title to the Globe site and $16 million for carrying costs and remediation. In 2014, Globeville One LLC acquired the site from ASARCO Multi-State Custodial Trust and in the same year, the Adams County Board of County Commissioners approved Metro District Service Plans, an overall development plan, a rezoning of the site, a preliminary development plan, and preliminary plot for the site. And this year, 2015, uh, a no further active remediation letter from CDPHE is anticipated as environmental remediation of the site is completed. Here's a view of the uh, former Globe plant after it ceased operations in 2006 and before it was, uh, before the various buildings were actually uh, demolished. Goals of redevelopment include job creation, transformation of the neighborhood and the Washington Street corridor, and remediation of a contaminated property. Anticipated outcomes include construction of 750,000 to 1 million square feet of high quality commercial and industrial space, as well as the creation of 1,000 plus jobs. Soil and groundwater remediation and site redevelopment has required public-private partnership and federal-state-regional cooperation to close a significant financing gap. This included a $10 million Section 108 HUD loan through Adams County Community Development, as well as $750,000 in grants through the City and County of Denver's Office of Economic Development. Construction and engineering plans for the site are under review. Globeville One LLC currently is working on the final development plan, final plat, and subdivision improvements agreement. It is anticipated that these requests will be brought before the BUCC in late spring or early summer. It could occur earlier than this, for example, if they were to submit this week, for instance, we could see a BUCC hearing as early as the end of May. Now, pursuant to Section 527 of the Adams County Development Standards and Regulations, improvements such as curb, gutter, sidewalk, drainage, and other street construction improvements must be complete and have preliminary acceptance granted by the Adams County Transportation Department prior to the issuance of a building permit. Due to a desire on the part of the applicant to have the first buildings and the new subdivision be complete by the end of 2015, the applicant is requesting that building permits be allowed to be issued prior to the completion of all required improvements. In essence, the developer would be allowed to proceed with both horizontal and vertical development of the site at the same time. The developer would be required to complete all horizontal infrastructure before the county would issue a certificate of occupancy for any particular building. The proposed subdivision will consist of eight lots. The northerly four lots, lots one, two, three, and four, have direct access to East 55th Avenue. The southerly four lots, lots five, six, seven, and eight, will take direct access to future Metro District maintained roads. This waiver request will only apply to the four northerly lots abutting 55th Avenue due to limited fire department access elsewhere on the site. 
the applicant acting as the master developer of the Crossroads Commerce Park at Globeville subdivision intends to install the horizontal infrastructure and then sell the development ready pads to a vertical developer who will construct the buildings. The applicant would like to commence with the horizontal infrastructure in spring of this year and finish by November of this year. The applicant states it is under contract with a vertical developer, Tremel Crow, who has a potential tenant or tenants interested in occupancy by January 1st of 2016. In order to meet this deadline, the building or buildings would need to be completed by the end of 2015. As a result of the applicant's contract with Tremel Crow, and Trammell Crow's potential interested tenant or tenants and the potential interested tenant or tenant's occupancy preferences, the applicant states it would not be able to meet its contractual obligations with Trammell Crow unless the county grants a waiver and issues building permits for vertical construction prior to completing all required horizontal improvements. Without granting such a waiver, the vertical developer would not be able to obtain building permits until all of the horizontal infrastructure is complete, anticipated around November of 2015, which would not allow the vertical developer enough time to construct the building or buildings prior to the date by which a potential tenant or tenants has indicated it would like to occupy a building or buildings on the site. At the time of platting, the applicant would be required to construct street improvements consisting of curb, gutter, and sidewalk adjacent to the property frontage, as well as right-of-way dedication. Uh, the Transportation Department notes that the proposed subdivision will have access to West 55th Avenue at several locations and a single access to Washington Street. The Transportation Department notes that issuance of building permits prior to acceptance of the public improvements presents some issues to the county, including fire and emergency vehicle and personnel access, increased stormwater runoff from the site due to increased imperviousness and the detention of ponds potentially not being completed, issuance of building permits on a site that does not provide the proper vehicle access and handicap accessible routes, issuance of building permits on a subdivision that has not been approved, and they note that the site lies within the county's MS4 stormwater quality permitting area. No construction or building permits should be issued until the applicant has been issued a county stormwater quality permit and has obtained their state stormwater quality permit. The Transportation Department further notes that Section 527 specifically addresses the concerns listed above and requires preliminary acceptance of all public improvements prior to issuance of building permits. If this waiver request is approved by the BOCC, then the forthcoming subdivision improvements agreement will need to include strict language on how these issues are to be addressed and resolved. If the final plat is ultimately approved and the requirements of Section 527 can be met for any individual lot within the subdivision, then the Adams County Transportation Department would not object to the issuance of a building permit for that lot. Adams County Fire Rescue in a letter dated February 4th, 2015 states that the hydrants on East 55th Avenue are sufficient for construction as long as the buildings are in the northern portion of the development and fire department access is provided. Here's a view looking west along East 55th Avenue. This is along the northern uh, perimeter of the site, which is to the left in this photograph. Here's a view looking east along East 55th Avenue. Here's a view looking south along Washington Street, peering into the site. Here's a view looking north along Washington Street. And here's a view looking west directly into the site. The overall concept of the applicant's proposal is to develop the 62.4 acre subdivision into a business park consisting of eight lots for commercial office and light industrial uses. Due to a desire on the part of the applicant to have the first buildings in the new subdivision be complete by the end of 2015, and due to practical difficulties arising from strict compliance with these standards and regulations, the applicant is requesting that building permits be allowed to be issued prior to the completion of public improvements infrastructure. Staff recommends approval of the applicant's request based on three findings of fact, five conditions, and four notes. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have questions for staff? Commissioner Odorizio. Can you, uh, yes, thank you for that. Can, can you explain the, the reason why we you'd normally do the consecutive versus concurrent development requirement? Yeah. Um, now, if somebody from the Transportation Department wants to opine, because I know this is really their, their area of expertise. Um. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Matt Emmons. I'm with the Transportation Department. Uh, can I ask you to expound on your question a little bit more? So what we're talking about is, is allowing the vertical and the horizontal to be done, done concurrently, right? Yes. And it's usually done consecutively. Yes. Well, there, um, yes, the uh, horizontal development's done, then the vertical development's done. Right, but in this case, we're asking to see if we can do it concurrently. Yes. So um, why, why do we, can you explain just a little bit of background of why normally uh, we would require consecutive versus concurrent? Well, the uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the public infrastructure that would be built would typically consist of uh, roads, utilities, sanitary sewer, water, uh, dry utilities. Those things have to be in place to provide other services like life safety issues, uh, accessibility to the site. So that's why you want to get your horizontal development done before you go vertical to make sure that the correct services are in place for to support that vertical development. And we don't think that that. Uh, per Approving this waiver is going to put any sort of hindrance on any other process down the road. In fact, what I'm hearing from you guys, let me know if I'm right, is that this that you feel comfortable with this today? Um, you have a unique situation here with the four lots on 55th Avenue. Because the 55th Avenue exists, the utilities exist in that road, and the fire department has the, the infrastructure in place to uh, provide life safety uh, um, support there, those four lots, we wouldn't object to it. Um, okay. We prefer to see all the development done, all the horizontal development done first, however. That makes sense. Thank you. More? Commissioners, any other questions? So I have a quick question for you, and that is on the stormwater issue. If you could go back to the slide where the transportation department was commenting on the stormwater. Yes. And I'd like to know from staff how we address those concerns, because I know the area, and I know the concerns with the stormwater runoff, the impervious surfaces. How did we address those concerns? Um, there are, uh, stormwater issues are addressed in the construction documents, um, and the only thing left on, uh, on Section 527 of the uh, county's development codes and stand, uh, regulations, standards and regulations, is the stormwater. Um, we would address that in the SIA and, they, and have a, spe a specific section in the SIA on the issuance of building permits and tie that directly to the, the stormwater improvements. And that's why our, uh, our request here from the Transportation Department says that we should have strict language in the SIA um, defining how the, those steps are made. So, so my question, my concern is, especially in the second bullet where it says, you know, the detention ponds potentially not being completed. Um, I wanna know, has, has the, have these been addressed in any shape or form so that we can protect the businesses downstream and the residents downstream and the roads I have a complicated answer. They have been addressed in the uh, construction documents, and the construction documents are approved. However, there's been a last-minute change to the site. They're having a little trouble obtaining an off-site parcel they were going to use for a detention pond, so we are going to have to review an addendum to the plans to approve that. So as of right now, that issue is not completely resolved. And again, in the SIA, we will address the issue of having all the stormwater improvements done um, for any, any individual lot prior to uh, issuing a building permit so that we won't have that issue of increased stormwater runoff. And is that something that comes back to the commissioners after we approve this or is that something that we just turn over to staff and, and it's negotiated at that point? Uh, much like uh, the um, approval of any SIA, the public improvements will have to come to the county commissioners for preliminary acceptance. Okay. So we will have a chance to review that. You will have a chance to accept them. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that was public comment and everybody knew that was the process. So right. thank you very much. Commissioners, any other questions? Commissioner Odoricio. Just generally speaking, what are, what are the remaining steps left in the project now, overall? Sure. Um, so currently, uh, the applicants are working on their final development plan and major subdivision final plat applications. And then along with that would be the subdivision improvements agreement. Okay. No other questions for staff? Is the, is the applicant present? Applicant, would you like to step forward and make a statement? Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, thank you very much and good morning. Uh, my name is Cameron Bertrand. I work for Globeville One LLC and we are the property owner and the applicant. Uh, thanks very much uh, for your time and more importantly I think for all staff's time on this one. Uh, from our perspective this is a good problem to have even though it is a, uh, a problem nonetheless uh, which is that the 
uh, demand for development on the site is just that strong and the uh, forward coming vertical developer is very excited to put and has a lot of interest in putting all four lots on 55th Avenue under construction in 2015 which will create the tax base and the job growth that we were all after all that time but to allow for that to happen in this cycle we needed to kind of work together and we were we figured out a way to work that together as a horizontal and vertical developer and are super appreciative of Adams County staff time to help put together a process that would allow that to happen so we we'd encourage you to uh, support today we certainly appreciate it and I'm happy to take any questions you have Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? No questions? Easy enough. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. I'll ask if there's anyone in the audience who would like to make a comment at this time on this case. No one? Okay. Commissioners, do we have a motion? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I move uh, that the Board of County Commissioners approve PLT 2015-00003, the case name is Crossroads Commerce Park at Globeville Building Permit Waiver, with the approval of three findings of fact, five conditions, and four notes. Second. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Approved. And we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.